For a thousand generations, the Jedi Knights were the guardians of peace and justice in the Republic. These paragons of virtue and selflessness were tasked with maintaining the supremacy of the light side and thus the balance of the force. But as we all know full well, not all of the Jedi lived up to those standards. In particular, the masters of the Jedi High Council often failed to do what was right, letting orthodoxy cloud their vision and lead them away from the path of the light. The Jedi Council was prominent in the prequel trilogy and in the Clone Wars, featuring a diverse and ever-changing array of Jedi Masters, but many of these Masters aren't really known all that well and casual fans might think that they're all either totally useless or totally unremarkable. Today, we'll be delving into the lives of these unknown Jedi Masters and determining whether they were true Jedi or just useless figureheads. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Firstly, we should clarify that when we talk about the Jedi Council in this video, we're going to be talking about the Jedi High Council. There were actually four Jedi Councils on Coruscant, each of which had their own tower on the Jedi Temple. The other councils, for the record, were the Council of First Knowledge, which oversaw the training of younglings and the purging of Sith teachings from the galaxy, the Council of Reassignment, which looked after younglings who weren't chosen as Padawans, and Padawans who failed the Jedi Trials, and the Council of Reconciliation, a group of Jedi Consulars that maintained the Order's relations with external political bodies. These other councils had five members each, while the Jedi High Council, the one that ran the Order, had 12. Jedi Masters weren't restricted to sitting on only one council, and several members of the High Council were known to have been members of the Council of Reconciliation as well. Now, onto the Jedi Masters themselves. The 12 Jedi High Counselors at the time of the Battle of Naboo, the start of the Order's Fall, were Yoda, Mace Windu, Kiadi Mundi, Plo Koon, Opa Rensisis, Even Peel, Adi Galea, Deepa Balaba, Yariel Poof, Yaddle, Eeth Koth, and Sacy Tin. Over the years, many of these masters died or stepped down, and they were replaced in order by Coleman Trebor, Shakti, Kit Fisto, Obi Wan Kenobi, Agan Kola, Coleman Kaj, Stas Ali, and lastly, Anakin Skywalker. We know several of these masters well already. We've done full videos on Mundi and Balaba before, and most of you are surely familiar with Yoda, Windu, Plo Koon, Shakti, Kit Fisto, and Obi Wan Kenobi. You're likely also familiar with famous non-master Anakin Skywalker. We'll be discussing none of these Jedi today, and if you're interested in Mundi or Balaba, we recommend watching those prior videos. Let's start with Yaddle. This 500-year-old Jedi Master was a consular, much like Yoda, and she embodied the Jedi philosophy of selflessness and self-sacrifice. As a Padawan, she was imprisoned for over a hundred years by the people of the planet Koba, trapped in a pit and regularly mocked by those living above. Despite this, she never allowed herself to become resentful and she pitied the Kobans instead. When she eventually escaped the pit after the planet was devastated by earthquakes, she chose to stay on Koba and help rebuild before returning to Coruscant. Upon returning to the Jedi Temple, she was made a master and she continued to embody everything the Jedi stood for. She died in 26 BBY on the planet Mawan, where she used the force to absorb the effects of a dangerous bioweapon, killing herself but saving the planet in the process. For that, we're going to sort Yaddle into the category of true Jedi. Opa Rensisis, everyone's favorite snake Jedi, could have been king back on his homeworld, but he refused that promised life of luxury in favor of serving the Order. Rensisis was a very tradition-minded Jedi prone to influence by the orthodoxy that sometimes crippled the council, but he was ultimately still a very kind-hearted being, unlike Kiadi Mundi. During the Clone Wars, he always insisted on sharing his forces food stores with local refugees, even when it could potentially cause logistical problems, as he saw the care of local refugees as his responsibility when it was his armies that displaced them. Rensisis was also a master tactician and one of the greatest Jedi generals of all time, he was skilled in the art of battle meditation, and the clones who served under him were fanatically loyal to him due to how completely they trusted his plans. He was killed by fallen Jedi Sora Bulk during the Siege of Seleucami shortly before the Battle of Coruscant. He may have been a bit of a boomer, but Rensisis too earns the title of true Jedi. Yurel Poof, the goofiest looking Jedi counselor, is next on our list. 
Contrary to what Robot Chicken might have you believe, Yarel Poof was a highly respected member of the Jedi Council and was considered to have perfected the art of using the Force to affect minds. In 27 BBY, he was tasked with protecting Coruscant from a radical general named Ashar Korda, who was in possession of the Infant of Shah, an artifact capable of destroying the entire planet. He formed an unlikely alliance with Jango Fett and Zam Wessel, who were also looking to stop Korda, and together they cornered and defeated the terrorist general. Poof was badly wounded in the fighting, however, and he sacrificed the last of his energy to disable the Infant of Shah, giving up his life for those trillions of Kurisanti. Yet again, we're going to have to declare him a true Jedi. Next up is Jedi Master Sae Tin, the greatest pilot in the Order, or at least until Anakin kicked him off his pedestal. Tin was a natural telepath which alienated him from his fellow Jedi when he was younger and led him to become quite introverted. He was also an incredible pilot with an affinity for spacecraft, with Adi Galea once noting that he spoke more to the sharp Spiral, his personal starfighter, than he did to her. Despite his seemingly antisocial nature, Tin was incredibly compassionate and he put his piloting skills to use, saving lives on countless occasions. His compassion even extended to his enemies. In one encounter with a trio of enemy battleships, he only went around destroying weapon systems and rendering the vessels immobile, despite only being in a starfighter and having no reinforcements. Even when it probably wasn't tactically prudent to do so, Tin prioritized saving the lives of as many of his enemies as possible, and that, we deem, is the mark of a true Jedi. We'll be discussing Jedi Masters Even Peel and Eeth Koth at once, as they had similar skills which they put to similar use. These two are probably more well known than Yaddle or Incisus or Poof, but despite this, they didn't have any real notable stories. Evan Peel was a fearsome warrior with decades of combat experience, one of the fiercest fighters of the council. Eeth Koth was a great warrior as well, known for his mastery of Crucitorn, a force technique that allowed him to enjoy incredible amounts of pain. Both of them put their talents to good use in the Clone Wars, but despite these skills, they never made much of an impact. Neither seemed particularly self-sacrificing or particularly cruel, so we're going to be classing both Peel and Koth as mostly useless. Jedi Master Adi Galea was born to a pair of Corellian diplomats, and she followed in the footsteps of her parents as a Jedi, mastering the art of diplomacy and putting it to good use. Her negotiation skills were crucial in maintaining peace in the Republic, at least for a time. She helped put an end to the Stark hyperspace war, and she also ensured a peaceful end to conflicts on Malastare and Kefex. Despite her best efforts, peace failed, leading to the Separatist crisis, but Galea didn't give up on preserving the Republic. In the two years leading up to the Clone Wars, she forged agreements with pirate bands, convincing them to stop preying on Republic worlds and to start working as privateers. Her work with the pirates of Karthak was vital in the Republic's victory on Geonosis in the First Battle of the Clone Wars, and the alliances she built were a godsend for the Republic in the first months of the conflict. For her cunning and dedication, we deem her a true Jedi. Next up, we have Arjun Kola, who replaced Eeth Koth after the start of the Clone Wars. Kola's talents were similar to those of his predecessor and fellow Zabrak, but he put them to much better use. During the Clone Wars, he led armies to victory on Geonosis and Brentul IV, and he also attempted to apprehend fallen Jedi Quinlan Voss on Nar Shaddaa. He was loyal to the Republic and to the decisions of the Jedi Council, but not to the point of callousness. Even though he was naturally aggressive due to his Zabruk heritage, always restrained himself and sought peaceful ways of resolving conflicts, even when dealing with supposed Darksiders, as he showed in his encounter with Voss on Nar Shaddaa. Arjun Kola wasn't perfect, but he was still, we believe, a true Jedi. Stas Ali was the last Jedi Master appointed to the Jedi High Council and the unremarkable successor of Adi Galea. In fairness to her, she didn't really have much of a chance to shine, as she was on the Jedi Council for only a year, starting after the death of Adi Galea, and we know little of her career beforehand. Nonetheless, she apparently didn't do anything noteworthy aside from failing to stop Grievous from kidnapping Palpatine and getting shot by clones on Seleucami. We're going to consider her mostly useless. Lastly, we have Coleman Trebor and Coleman Kaj. The two Colmans, or just the Coleman if you prefer, were even more unremarkable than Stas Ali. They did little more than sit in comfy chairs in the High Council chamber, at least as far as we know. 
Coleman Treble, the Virk Jedi Master appointed to replace Yorel Poof, was considered a skilled orator, but aside from talking a lot, all he really did was come up with atrocious tactics on Antar 4 during the Separatist Crisis and die trying to kill Dooku on Geonosis. Coleman Kaj, on the other hand, did literally nothing as far as recorded lore goes. We deem both Coleman to be completely useless. So that's our quick overview of the Jedi High Council as it was during the prequel era. Would you like to see longer videos on any of these Jedi, excluding some of the last ones we mentioned? Let us know in the comments section below. And just before you go guys, make sure you check out our wider community and consider donating to Patreon to get access to a behind the scenes Discord and join us on our Geetsley's main Discord and our Geetsley's gaming network. Anyways guys, as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.